did you uh, see where Joe Biden's eyes started bleeding during the the that climate change thing? Yeah, I heard about that. Like, That's uh, what? you know some reptiles, man. For protection, they bleed out of their eyes. It's fucking true, man. David Icke is right. <laughs> so, so Ben Biden, Joe Biden is a is a reptile. He's a reptile shapeshifter, man. Just like all of them. Hey, I don't know if you're old enough to to watch it. Back in the, I think, 80s, there was a show called... This is BTW RLM 340. For those of you on Aftercast, wherever you find us, because you should find us. Someone should find us. Hopefully in the future too when they really start needing it. Because we failed. Just got to make a comment here folks. I don't think I've ever, ever seen us hit freezing before the leaves fell off the trees. So those of you taking note of such things, take note. Not only are the bears fat generally, not just a few, but a lot of them. More fat than normal. I've never seen this. Caught me so that surprise, as a matter of fact. So, pay attention to this one. Not sure where it's going to go. Not sure what the future weather is. It changes. Oh, wow. It's it's natural. Don't panic. It's organic. Don't panic. Instead, we, we panic. And so, I'm trying to get us off all that panic stuff and try to show us uh, how to go through what we're suffering because we, we only suffer it because we keep allowing it. But whatever that might be that causes us just to be complainers. You know, I've been showing you on some of the more important things around, in particular for us in the United States, our land law, uh, property rights, uh, rights in general. They all kind of spring out from there. As I've mentioned before, a little property law book I had, I said if it wasn't for property, you wouldn't need law. And so we have property, folks, and there's a reason for it. And it's different than anywhere else in the world in the history of man. And so we can let it go away or... And let those that have the advantage take care of take advantage of us, or we can step find out what that is and start to stop it, and then ultimately stop it. Which we've had this week some pretty interesting, uh, cool news relative to. Uh, I'll just explain later. Uh, it's something I'm not I'm not even involved with. It's uh, veterans affairs and services and things to vets, although my colleague is, and he's had to deal with it. And we were able to take the very same things I tell you here. As, uh, as it occurs to me, very foreign to me, I don't have, no, I don't study the law, or the rules, or any of that at all. We applied the very same rules to that and outed a whole, a whole system of, of essentially fraud and misappropriation. And, and you can too, wherever the wrong is that you need to make right, you can find this. These mechanisms that have been put in, put in play against us. There's a method on how they go about it. And, and anyway, let me get to the, the point of how, where we start today. Uh, maybe it passed by, or maybe you heard about it, maybe it didn't. Uh, but I, there's some interesting, uh, important information that came out of the White House. And I want to touch base on it, and I'm kind of mixed on this one. Uh, one is, it's great for y'all, who maybe won't listen to me, and have to have it from a different source, on what you're supposed to be doing up ahead uh, of a problem with uh, any agency, code enforcement, any imposit code. Remember, motor vehicle, you think, motor, you think you know, the cops are just nobody... They're the imposers of code. And so I'm, I'm speaking to all all y'all that are out there too on this as well. And there, there's different layers and dynamics at work, and you really be, got to be cognizant of it. And part of what my, I try to do behind the woodshed is give you the principles on how you don't put, bring yourself into jeopardy and, and or your property and still get really what you need or at least make a stalemate. Right now, without much accountability, it's it's good to, to even make that stalemate. And But this week, Trump... Trump's new executive orders to restrain the administrative state. Everybody believes we're in this administrative state, and I can't deny that it's there. But they usually speak to the exclusion of anything else. And I've shown you that's not necessarily the case. In fact, the Supreme Court just came out here this, what, weeks ago, a month ago, a couple months ago now, to show you that when there is no administrative, uh, when there's an administrative imposition, you don't have to wait around. And that's where it tears for me on this. But for the rest of you all, if you needed the information somewhere else, Trump came out with these, uh, it ends up being three executive orders that I think now can, we can use to 
help explain to you how you are supposed to address the administrative impositions in your life, which are everywhere. It's the whole world runs on it. The whole world really literally runs on it, and we haven't figured that out. And the administrative impositions is how the takedown happens as well. That uh, you, I think it's very important for you all who have property to, to understand what what uh, the Trump just did. And, and my misgiving is that it didn't really go far enough. And remember, the, I talked last week, the, the prediction is, is not the predict, projection. The projection is what the system does to you. They cannot predict. And so you have to go about making the laws and rules and things like that that would make a point to uh, create a prediction. And that's where I tell you don't make an opinion. Your opinion is not a prediction. It's laying out the facts of a condition within a condition and assessing that and then creating the strategies and the tactics that you're going to either protect yourself or advance a position. And I always find myself in either side because, it, like for minors, they're, in a, they're being attacked, if you will, by a, an administrative state when the, state has, the administrative state has no authority. The property owners, in fact, this is what came out of this, was the property owners that were accosted essentially by the EPA uh, lost their property, lost their uh, businesses relative to this uh, administrative strain. But the very important rules came out that you need to hear. Uh, you need to, because this is really, it, there is an administrative world, and there's a whole bunch of impetus to stick you and keep you there. And if you, so if you don't understand how, the, uh, how that works, you don't understand how to defend yourself not even within the context of an administrative imposition, or how to immediately be able to um, extricate yourself. Now this, these new EOs, executive orders from Trump, are going to allow you to at least make, it instructs you on the record you need to make, and that record I tell you is what I tell you all the time behind the woodshed, is what you use to show that they don't have the authority. And so all that they're telling us here is really telling you, for you, for you to get beyond, I think, the Bar Association as well, because their attorneys always stick you inside the administrative state, as I've pointed out over and over. In fact, the, the efforts of the Pacific Legal Foundation to try and protect these people are what was used to advance this thing. Notwithstanding the fact I've told you that the Pacific Legal Foundation will stick every cause through an administrative obligation, completely violating your property rights up front. And so I've got a mixed feeling on this. Uh, I think it's great. To know, I think it's great that they're coming out with it, but this is not. This is not, I'll just tell you. This is what we do. These EOs are exactly how we execute before the EOs in uh, confining the agency without this now mandate that they, we already know they're supposed to do anyway. We hold our feet to that fire, whether anybody else knows. They are now in it's now in writing that their feet are now held to a certain fire. That's and it's their burden. And so you'll you'll hear as I work through this how this eventuates itself. You'll hear now what the attorneys really haven't been doing uh, that they ought to have been doing, uh, notwithstanding Pacific Legal Foundation's position. Remember, our lawsuit before we filed it on our own, Pacific Legal Foundation would not take it without their uh, conditioning of the of our our case, and their conditioning is was identifiable as an administrative servitude under which we would then try and defend ourselves. Completely impossible because of this condition, which now these EOs, executive orders from the president, will help to alleviate. But what do they do? They allow you to make a record. See, this is I tell you, keep making that record. They allow you to make the record, and it mandates that the agencies have to respond in particular ways. And you have to read these. If you read these EOs, you'll see they're very particular, and you have to engage those in those particularities. It's not hard. It's just that it has to be specific. In other words, when, you, when someone asks you a question, you can't both talk, and it's about a specific thing, you can't be talking about the weather. You have to be responding specific to what they're doing and whether or not they had the right. Is more, what we attack, we attack whether they had the right to ask us. You also notice in these EOs, if you go to if you take the time to go look, it's actually connecting up to a website and the information that's given on a website. Now, why does your property rights contingent on whether or not you're connected to the to the internet or is is the evidence that they continue to press again on you against your rights, even in the application of this? There's no necessity to have contact with the with the websites. 
and, but they're showing you they're funneling this thing into data, uh, the system, uh, Internet of Things, and all that. So there's uh, some problems as well with this. But for all y'all, uh, in the general sense, these are fantastic EOs. Federal agencies evade rulemaking process, yet still levy fines, revoke permits, and seize property via, quote, guidance, and Trump's orders may put a stop to this practice. And this is, this is just in the header of this, of this article. That's the problem, folks, may. They don't address the problem. They allow you to go in and engage the, uh, the agency to for, uh, try to force them to explain, and they'll lie too, so this is not a, not a case, uh, to explain how they have authority. And it, that's why the may, because you, that process kind of gives it over to them again. And then all you have is another issue. And this is what the attorneys do. They throw your property into this issue thing. And then the guidance is, de it's deference to the authority, to the, to the agency typically. Underneath this though, you're going to have three or four more steps in order to require the agency to substantiate itself. More importantly, there's double oversight on this now, which is really the killer thing. And suspiciously, if I can say it that way, it mimics or it actually applies exactly what I told you we did against uh, the Forest Service promulgation of Rule 228s uh, back a few years ago, the very colleague I was talking about earlier in the broadcast here uh, was the one that uh, was uh, identified this ability of small business administration department called advocacy to have an oversight over promulgation of rules as they would affect the small business administration and its giving of money. And because if there was a promulgation problem, a um, improper due process problem, or some other couple things within the process of an agency rule, that advocacy oversight could kill a whole process. And that's how we invoked that process. They looked into the promulgation of the Forest Service of its new 228s, which you live under, which you're not supposed to be. And they killed those, just their word said it didn't follow the, prom, the, the rule, due process, and it killed that whole new rule set notwithstanding that the agenda inside is using them. And so what they have offered now, which is interesting, mimics what we did years ago. They now have an oversight from the Office of Budget uh, Management and Budget. That's now the whole of the government has money involved here. What have I told you when you respond? You put upon, after you set the stage of your facts relative to showing they don't have an authority, you then make the statement that the continued use of federal funds to come after you with this or to pursue this without the showing is a misappropriation of public funds. We've been doing this, folks, for, for at least 10 years. This, this is how, how you defeat this. This is how you make the record if you can't defeat it. And yet now we have the, now you get President Trump's uh, authorities to come down to tell you that's what you should have been doing. So at one level, I'm feeling really good. We've been doing this. It doesn't affect what we do at all because, as I'm telling you, this is how we approach it. But it tells you that maybe your attorneys haven't been doing it, right? If I've been doing it different and this now follows that and what we do is trump all this non-administrative state so-called or at least call them on, on uh, the, under the carpet and stalemate their administrative process, you know we've been on target here, right, folks? I mean, you gotta you got to give us that much. You have to give yourself that much in application, the way we talk about this, the way this works out. So the first order declares that it's a goal to, quote, ensure that Americans are subject to only those binding rules imposed through duly enacted statutes or through regulations lawfully promulgated under them, and that Americans have fair notice of their obligations. The second complements the first, promising that Americans will not, quote, be subjected to a civil administration enforcement action or adjudication absent prior public notice or bo of both the enforcing agency's jurisdiction or particular con over particular conduct and the legal standards applicable to that conduct. We're talking about that funny word jurisdiction again, aren't we, folks? Okay, so we're right. Uh, this broadcast, I don't know how I lead this. I, didn't, I was talking about that to familiarize with these concepts because they seem foreign to most people. They're key. They're, they show up everywhere, these things I tell you, when you're addressing an oppression and a tyranny. And the Trump administration said, there's due process here, and you're supposed to execute it. We're going to make an order. 
the highest uh, administrative officer, the, the president, is making an order to his sub, uh, sub uh, minions uh, to do this certain thing. Okay, now they can give you all kinds of n noise, but uh, the agencies then they do. And that's why I've given you a second letter that you send in order to catch them up on that. And you bring everything they do into a private action against you, not an agency action because they can't show. And you make sure that when you make your statements that it's relative to the black and white, not your opinion. And this works across the board, folks. I'm just, this, okay, so let's keep going here. Um, so this, this uh, the author of this, it's a Reason article, author shows me that they don't quite understand a little bit. So I've got a little bit of question on how you're told some of this. But they make good points. They're, they're believing this is a good thing. On the surface, it is a good thing. But it's something that you should have been doing all along. The fact that no one's pointing out that I can find that, that the attorneys don't do this and haven't been doing it is, is a problem. It's the problem that you've been suffering under subject to an attorney, the Bar Association. And so this is the, this, you're going to see another theme today about these, the, everything's subject to an attorney somewhere, whether you're looking at this, well, it's not, but that's what they get you to believe, and you buy into that administrative state uh, concept, and you don't understand, you have a collateral right, an outside right that attack can attack their very imposition, as I've explained over and over for years. Regardless if it's a military state we're looking at, an administrative state, a de, de jure, de facto state, a corporate state, I don't care, this is how you, you attack it. There, these EOs are simply telling you what's already been there, and that's, for me, it doesn't do us any different. It's just now what we have. The only thing we do have, I suppose, I can point to a black and white that mandates what we say. Remember I've told you about when we were attacked by the Forest Service on our mining claim, I had, we addressed the imposition of a plans, operations, uh, a plan of operations, and bonds, and all that. They want to demand all this stuff. And I produced 21 pages of authorities that showed every one of which they didn't have authority. And I put that into the administrative record. Well, it came out later. That was the one where they they determined that they were they weren't going to answer, but they were going to track us down. And, they were, and I finally met them in that town hall meeting when we were answering to the question of whether or not the mining law should be stopped because it was dangerous to everybody. And we successfully showed the public in that meeting that they shouldn't. Well, in that meeting when I went to it, the Forest Service ranger there, the district ranger, said, we've been looking for you. Remember I told you that? And I said, I don't know why. Uh, you don't need to look for me. All you need to do is respond to my 21-page response. Found out a little bit later, they were claiming they didn't understand. That's a win, folks. If they don't understand you, you, that's it. You don't have to go any further, and we haven't. We continue to mine without all the stuff that they demanded because they don't have jurisdiction. The administrative record is now still open and unanswered on that, so they can't proceed against us, and they're not going. And they claim to have no knowledge of what we're talking about. And I'm, I was quoting strictly the law, which tells you something else. Did we have our property stolen? Did we have to pay fines and permits and all that? Absolutely not. This is years ago. I approach the very same thing over and over. And so I wanted to show you there is ways that you, when you study enough, you'll see the answers before they start giving you permission to do things. You want to be a critical thinker? Get behind the woodshed, literally. And so this attach, these DEOs attach anywhere a federal agency will come in and claim authority to be, your jurisdiction to beat your prop, steal your property, put fines and permits of, in a attached to you commercial uh, fines and all that, when you see $37,500 fines, that's commerce. Because they're supposed to be, um, they're supposed to be an activity that's in commerce that will you can derive the funds to pay that fine. This is how taxes work. That's how you defeat taxes as well. But anyway, getting here. So there's a question on this article as to that's all well and good and this and that, and the guidance and how they and then he believes this is an elegant uh, uh, in concept and, and elementary in operation. In fact, it's just letting you know what they were supposed to be doing all along. And so hit to him and to any one of you may think, oh, this is a neat way to do this. Oh, we finally get our rights. No, that's just you being ignorant before. And he's just telling you now, the people in there are telling you now you, you could have done it. The problem is we've been contacting them in, over years. They don't want to talk to us. And he fell short. And he fell short because of what I said earlier. This is inside administrative procedures when your first letter under a demand notice should be to show they don't have this jurisdiction and you're not inside that this jurisdiction until they can decide. And they have to decide lawfully. And if they decide lawfully, you can move collaterally to stop them, can't you? We've talked about it. There was a Supreme Court case about this. This is not that hard, actually. 
If you think it's hard or confusing, your eyes just roll back. This is you being someone that's not worthy of the rights that were given to us in this country to be able to protect ourselves. And if you're not worthy of that, what's your complaint? You need to stand up and be worthy. Bring yourself into where we should have been. I'm not really talking about anything really new or, or something new. It doesn't take a genius here, actually. People will, I've heard it said that I'm, a, I'm somewhat that, but it's not true. Well, okay, we have our intelligence, but I mean, this is not really that true. It's all written. I didn't know this. I may have understood how to work the, the notices to us to figure out what it means, and that takes a little bit of work, but that wasn't outside of anybody's capacity. Everyone. Well, I mean, there may be some people that can't, obviously, but most everyone should be able to pull this out. When I show you a statute that says the jurisdiction of an administrative authority is over this place and this place and this place and this place, and you're not in that place, why do you answer in subject to that jurisdiction when they don't have already told you? They don't have territorial jurisdiction, and when you look closer, they don't even have personum jurisdiction because you're a private property owner, or it's not under the federal specter, or, or you, they don't have the subject matter jurisdiction because they've just explained to you what it's over. Why don't you just read the black and white on that, and that's the answer? No, 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 we got to go off, oh, I've got constitutional rights, so you're not supposed to do the Declaration of Independence, all this other nonsense. They're talking right here. This is about the, government, the agencies having to come up with jurisdiction. That's all we prove. We prove out by the law. They don't have it. Now it's on them to have to produce it, and they can't. So that answers that. This or these orders do the same thing. What's interesting is they follow a process that we've done over the years. I can't say they got it from us. But I can't tell you they're not watching our paperwork because we filed and we filed well in the past. We haven't done any much in the last six months, but we filed all the information on this one in lots of places. My point is that that's the due process that was required that the government has been getting away with, that the attorneys have been allowing the agencies to get away with, that you now have black and white to say, no, you're supposed to do this. And this is the big deal about this. So, I mean, I could go on reading. I see lots of stuff. It's very important in this article. That's why I have it up for a link later. Uh, for those of you that will go to it and read it, uh, they explain a bit of things, but I have to give you a little caution. Be careful there's not a quite little misinterpretation on really its application. And uh, that was brought home clear to me when they referenced uh, Pacific Legal Foundation. And I've told you this problem before. All these uh, APA attacks, they, they go in and the judgments that go through the court and they get thrown down and the judgments of the appeal, appellate, uh, the appeals, uh, excuse me, the administrative uh, application is wrong and the decision from the ap appeals, uh, excuse me, the appeal of the administrative decision is wrong and then it gets thrown down. But you look at what the thing that the what the position is and those property owners have to go back to the EPA and be still suffer it even instead of collaterally attacking that they don't have to. And so you get into these, these administrative so-called territorial courts that are not Article Three courts, and you're presumed to be subject to federal, as a federal property with federal property subject to all this commercial regulation. How do I know that? Because Congress has the exclusive right to commerce, which means all their agencies are only speaking commerce. And I've told you, land, disposal, uh, land disposals in this country are not in commerce. And so we are giving up a whole lot. I'm go, I've actually gone way about it. I was going to be a little bit nicer and just read this, but these, these ideas are just too, too compelling to not just throw out as they hit me. I'm just, they're just coming to my mind as I look up these words I'm reading uh, that I'm not telling you. I'm just reading them off of the report. Uh, this is uh, really, the, the answer is a lot quicker than even this article would explain, I guess is the point. So you listen to me hours and hours, yet the answer is written in a few lines on a piece of paper. Now, I told you 21 pages. Well, that was when I first addressed the Forest Service in a way I knew they were going to attack us and they had environmental terrorists were, going to, were in the background, and we found that out later to be the truth because they wanted us out of the land because they want to expand a wilderness area. We're right, on the, we're right in the middle of that. And so I had to I realized early, early on, this is years and years ago, I was going to have to address this front, way up front and put all the cards on the table. It ended, up be, it ended up being a wall that they can't, they can't scale, dig, go around anything because of the demands of the administrative state, if you want to even agree that that's a control. They can only go so far. These EOs give you the permission, if you needed it, to do what I've been telling you behind the woodshed for years, what we do all the time. This is why I, I'm, I don't know what more to say, really. I just... 
I look. I said what I just said. And I look at there. I could read and read. It. It's not going to tell you anything if you unless you get what I just said. I don't have to read these stories. The EOs were irrelevant at some level, but most of you don't. Most of you don't understand this stuff. I don't know why. You rather think about other things. You think it's more important. Uh, see, we should have this as a body of knowledge in us that we don't use it because they don't want to come against us because they know we're a populace that knows this stuff, but we're not. In fact, they quit Twitter. I saw some two stories come right back to back. I've talked about the subject matter of those Twitters for over 10 years. The answers coming back are wrong. It's a misunderstanding of your own basic law of the land, the basic laws of your land, your property. And so you do the wrong things or have the questions that you do. And they're not a question. They're an attack. They're a weapon used against you, and they're defeatable. They're defeatable and easily defeatable, and this is giving you permission, if you need it now, to do that. They talk and complain here about the Trojan horse rulemaking creative sustained guidance isn't just unlawful, it's unconstitutional. That's right. And so it's easy, easy to kill it, to stop it. And, and I don't understand why this is a question. I don't understand why you have to go to a bar member whose membership says that their, their rules are going to subvert your property, and you're going to maybe see this as I get down the track on a different issue, but similarly discussing the attorneys being involved in your life. You're subject to their imposition because you don't know. And the system is wired to listen to their imposition and not listen to when you do know. And this is a different type of problem. So they call it Trojan horse rulemaking. It's not actually. Which that, to me, tells me that there's a people who don't know how to stop that. And I wouldn't be telling you this if we I didn't have evidence that we do it all the, all the time. See, all the time, we have, like I said, we haven't engaged much. After some while, they stop dealing with you. Right? I mean, they, they, oh, we've been looking for you. Why would they be looking for me, folks? I told you about that. There's another connection. It's another admission that they'd rather use force and 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 and. and uh, attacking you than actually deal with, with the law. If you listen between the words of what I'm telling you and the dynamic, you're hearing you're dealing with ty tyrants. It's, it has nothing to do about the administrative state. And so there's certain ways to check that. And I'm going to repeat myself. So these EOs tell you now you can. We'll now exact, absolutely rely on this. I've been talking with my colleagues uh, explaining how we will just kind of use this now to um, well, we want to invoke the OMB, so we'll we'll be looking to do that a lot because that's uh, misappropriation of public funds is a neat way to go at these people. Remember, I sued that. Remember, I, I wrote the our lawsuit was written on that, did wasn't it? We have misappropriation of public funds to use leverage funding through the circuit of the EPA. Remember, we sued that out in 2013. I didn't just learn it that week. Okay, this is all knowable stuff. Anyway, I was excited in one regard to see that they, he actually did, did this. But they, you know, they're, everyone's thinking this is a, a sweet thing, which it is in the application. You now get to know, but it's not because it doesn't bring, and this is what my uh, other colleague, uh, the chairman of the mining district, I was talking to him about this and trying to bring him up to the speed of what I had seen because it just came out a few days ago. And I, I said, so what is your, what's your thoughts on this? And he says, well, there's no real accountability, is there? I go, you're right, there isn't. In fact, the very end of the EO said this does not provide a remedy. Now, that said, I'll tell you, you just have to have another violation to your property to, that per, does provide the remedy, and then you use the failure to do these EOs as a, essentially a perfection that they were attempting to, oh, they omitted, there was an omission to do, what is that? The omission to do something they had the duty to do while interfering with the property they had no right to interfere with is what? Under state law, that's likely, I'll say likely, because I don't know, I don't know of all the 50 states, or the 57 States, when we get into this next story, but uh, condition, but uh, is uh, there's actually more than those, but what is it, folks? You got they don't have the right in this state when they don't have a right, an official comes and takes tries to, to interfere with your property without the right and no warrant. That's what that's felonies, that's the felony of commission and omission. And then you have the that's the extortion on the property, the rights is coercion both omission and commission, conversion when they both exist, that's omission, and that's six felonies that they commit. How hard is this, really? So, maybe I've you know, talked too fast. The rudiments of what you were, we've been, the, 
the permission that you need to do what I've been saying is here. Uh, I think it's uh, important for you. I'm happy for you all to see it. Uh, it, it certainly confirms what I've been telling you. Uh, they want to talk about being a level of transparency. I've told you, be careful. The transparency makes it so you can't see them. What you're actually doing is bringing the, the violation present so that it can be seen. It's not a ghost in the machine anymore. You don't do it on your opinions, and you don't ask questions. There's a very direct route, but you have to be read. You have to read how it works, and you're not going to make that up in your mind. They have a certain process, and it's all in the black and white that you have to go. That is the, the system that's coming against you. And so the big deal for us, again, I'm getting down toward rolling this thing down, is that there's going to be uh, agencies will be required to tender economically significant guidance uh, to the Office of Mud Budget and Management, the OMB, for approval. This is exactly what we caused to happen against the 228s years and years ago through advocacy. And again, I my colleagues and I, we looked at this and we said, well, how much, how far do you go from coincidence to not say that they've been reading our stuff and actually don't talk to us, but they actually pick up on what we're talking about? The problem is since they don't really know, and I would say this with all, without any arrogance, the Washington, D.C. does not know the subject matter uh, enough that that's all they could come up with was these EOs. Because if they understood the subject matter, there would have been, as my uh, colleague, the chairman of the dist what, mining district said, there's no accountability built in. In other words, you are subject, they're telling all you property owners, there's impliedly that you are subject to that administrative state. I'm here to tell you that you are a subject only to them because they're a criminal, and that is quickly witnessed out. And then you're not subject in that regard, are you? You still have a, a criminal at your door, like a Genghis Khan, but you're not now subject uh, by presumption and to the deference of the decision of Genghis at your door. Let me go see if I can pick up something here in the story. The new standard of accountability will make the process more fair. I don't believe so. It does make it more fair when you assert it, but it's not more fair because it doesn't bring accountable, and more fair is not lawful. I guess it's the other thing that gets me. There's no accountability up front. You have to know to bring the accountability, and that's that collateral attack in an equity condition. Underneath your grant rights and that kind of thing. You notice they'll never talk about that in these, in these things. They uh, presume upon you a subject status. Now, in the, in the example of Drake's Bay Oysters, which was the guy standing in the podium, uh, which was made a short comment, uh, that's a little bit different. They had a contract that, that, that with the agency. They still got mistreated, serious, just seriously abused. But that's a slightly different context. So you have to really look at that. That, that, that guy may not have been, he could have asked for it. He needed to ask for this. I was telling them at the time. In fact, I got to go back and look at my records. I was asked to offer some suggestions on what to do. I can't remember exactly what that was, but I said they're not challenging this authority up front right in the right ways. This would have answered that, right? So I told them that. So I've got to go back and confirm all this, but they didn't listen to me. No, their attorneys did what they did, and they went down in flames, even so. But they were in an administrative context because they're dealing in a land that was man administered by the, uh, by the government, the federal government. Your private property is not administered by the federal government. Our mining claims are private property. They're not administered by the, by the uh, federal government. On an uncommon entry. I'm not talking about leasables and saleables, or where the rules are to telling us the subject matter of minerals reserved to the United States. That's not what we're talking about. Over those minerals, they have an authority. Totally different law. And so for those of us that I've been telling you what here, how to uh, dis to separate the condition so that you're not under. Again, these EOs help us. They'll help you to, to loosen, uh, to, I, loosen, I was reading the word, loosen the grip of the United States rate. Absolutely. This will work across the board. You have this right, these rights, in every capacity. And I want to remind you, in 2013, we sued for the encroachment on the property without a right as felony by the state in their legislation. We sued because of the funding that was used, which was misappropriation to do the trespass, the wrongful trust, the pass, trespass upon the land, and against the uh, grantor's obligations to protect. We're in a completely different law now. What authority do they have to interfere? As an agency have to interfere, interfere with that, especially where the president and Congress already signed your underlying documentation for the fact. 
Are you, does anybody put this stuff together like I do? You, you should. Because when you start thinking this way, you start to look around you, around your life and what you own and this and that, and all of a sudden this stuff starts to say, oh, wow, this, this is all sitting right there with me and I've never understood it that way. And these people really didn't have the right to do what they do. They call this Trump's regulatory gambit as I'm loosening the grip. Trump's regulatory gambit, they make it like this is gameplay. Your law is not a game, folks. This is why the perception is wrong here. But I use it because the guy went through a discussion that would give you an idea of how this laid out, why it came about, and what that gives to you that don't re either listen to me, really, or, or don't apply what I'm saying, or, don't, or feel you don't have a need, so you don't think that it applies in other places of your life. Now, I guess if you're a hermit crab in a place in the forest, I suppose it wouldn't apply, well, until they come knocking on the wall of your cave, uh, which they did to me in a way when I told you I was off in the, for seven years, I lay, wait, uh, was off in the wilderness, if you will, and uh, stayed away, and they came knocking after my, my where I was living. I held them off for a long while, and it was, uh, I got other things I had to do. Actually, I was moved into the place where I then became looking at the child services problem. That was the, the next iteration. I took a small a get away from the world type thing because I was tired of it. And they came after me. They were looking, what's up? What are you doing? Who are you? What's going on? I, ans I answered everything I tell you how to answer here. They never, they never got who I was. They never found out. They never had an authority to do anything to me. And I'm sitting right on the public land, and they're trying to tell me all these laws they have to put me out, and they couldn't. Why? Because I was just feeding back the black and white and exposing the laws they were using were actually felonies because they were improperly applying it. And when they did that, that was a misappropriation of public funds. Just what these EOs do. So, again, I, I can go through this over and over and repeat myself. There's a real simple way to address the things that are against us. Um, I'm happy to see this regulation, these EOs. Um, I'm a little concerned they're EOs because they can be undone. Uh, next time. So I told you, with Trump, we have a small window. It's not complete. I told you, it was just a small mouse hole. But we're going to get relief enough to see uh, what we can do. I'm hoping people listen to what I'm saying. And this, it was, you know, I was hoping it would expand a lot faster, multiply us much quicker. So we would just be this knowledge in the country, across the country. You watch everything, all the numbers that are around my, my broadcast, you can see it's not happening. So that's a reality I have to kind of face every every day. I go look around or, or respond to people or look at the week at the week and see what numbers I might get. It's not the, 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 the listenership that wants to stop this nonsense does not engage. It does not want to stick around long enough to hear it. It does not want to engage anything uh, particular to work out the things that are not known at this time in anybody of you. So we go on to the next story. Trump signs executive orders in transparency and federal guidance and enforcement. If you kill the jurisdiction up front, there's no there's no enforcement. If you find if you can put in the record and show not not your opinion, you don't call them uh, felons. You show how what they're doing or attempting to do is a felony, and or I go to the trust breach because that's another level. And there's another level than that. I won't I don't have too much talk time to talk. I've mentioned all this stuff before that you will eliminate their enforcement rights. Any enforcement becomes evidence of the, of the, of the crime, if you will. And it becomes organized criminal syn syndicates operating. So they talk about bringing fairness to the administrative state. I'm telling you, if you understand your right, if you really understood your property rights, you wouldn't complain so much. It wouldn't be nice to be attacked, but you're going to have an answer a lot quicker and a lot more summary than uh, hear lots of people talking. As I've told you, when a permit demand comes from an agency against a minor now, the, the response back to that letter, that notice demand, which is part of the administrative state notice, which they give you, the letter in response is like a page, sometimes a page and a half. It depends on, on the condition that they're imposing. We rarely get the second letter. And when we do, we bring in those felonies, and the continuance of the condition is a felony. So what are we doing? We're putting the burden on the agency to produce its right to continue and calling, giving them notice of their crime up front if they continue without that information. is nothing more, is in a way, without the accountability step, potential accountability, giving you the right of action against that beyond any administrative state, despite the administrative state, it gives you the power to go in and show how they're doing that. You just make those, these are just line statements about how that works. 
So I, I guess, again, I just looked at all this. Are you, is this interesting to anybody? Do you, can you adapt this to other places? I'll tell you you can. If you can't see that, you need to study a little bit more. Stop complaining. Stop spending the time you complain and start really following more of what, I, what I'm saying to go look for and pull this out. Pull this through and make your records correctly. Use this now. You can put these EOs right in their face and say, how did you comply with these when this, this, and this, and this is the condition? How did you comply? How, how are you going to how comply with these EO, EOs and, and within 30 days? And if you can't, you know, bugger off. I mean, you're going to get crass. The, the thing is that this, the letter's not that hard. And as I've said, once you start an administrative response, and they can't give you the proper answer, that question is open and they can't go to the courts. If they do, that's a motion to dismiss because it's not ripe from the agency side. And so we're bringing that accountability of action and mandating the response and obligation on the agency. And when you look at the words of what they're, how they describe this, you're going to find out uh, this um, is incorrectly stated as giving you a seat at the table. Now that really rung home for us because that's exactly what we're, we're or the complaint through my other co another colleague working with another county back to Washington into the White House was that they're not giving counties a seat at the table. That's coordination, folks. That has nothing to do with your property rights. You aren't. You shouldn't be at that table with this concern because that has nothing. That that process of the seat at the table is coordination is not something they're supposed to be engaging your property with. I remind you, the Jefferson Money District was established in part to be able to affect coordination, so that miners could come underneath the protection ahead of the promulgation of bad rules, so they wouldn't be suffering this stuff and have to work with this thing like this EO allows. Inside this is a misinterpretation and a mis, um, re, a, in, improper purpose for why it exists when you see you get a seat at the table. Your property disposed to you is a block to that seat. That seat is not one you want to sit in because it's already been said and done. You have these rights that the agency has no right to interfere with. Why would you want to sit at a table where that might be a dialoguing question? Then there they have the impracticability standard and burden on the, age, on the agency, those that are in coordination. That still allows for an agency to overturn something, but it's the burden to show where they, the agency could do nothing else that no other option could be done in pre preservation of a different law that they are tasked to apply is totally different than hearing the entrance of this where you have to make an EO to protect you against the administrative agencies and the answer is they have to show their authority. This shows you how on its head this whole nation, the people of this nation has allowed this. This is not a question for me. This condition is not a question. It's like exactly what we were like. One of the Twitters was about the highways. They want to go and challenge a county, wants to challenge, a, take claim under ours 2477. They don't understand the condition. No. 2477 is the grant, the statutory side of the grant that happened in 1866 that allows for the disposal to the use. And what it does when you assert RS-2477 is it puts that roadway, that highway, that trail into question. It puts it at the table, if you will, but it's a, it ends up being a judicial table. When, in fact, it's if it's there and existent for the statutory acceptance of the state, it's been there and probably been disposed for, for decades and maybe centuries. A century, at least. Why would you bring that to the table? No, that's already been disposed. That goes through whatever the state says. It's in a couple states, they give that exclusive jurisdiction to the county. And if the if federal agencies want to change that disposal, they got to go through the county. There's no authority in the federal agency. There's no seat at the table over that. That's a due process on how you're going to modify or alter a, a highway. It's under the roadway law. I keep telling you about this stuff. So if you don't have a proper understanding, you end up doing all the wrong things. And who does the wrong things but these attorneys? They don't... You know they'll, they'll 
chastise me or they'll they'll dis dis I don't even know what the words are they they just won't they'll call me names and or disregard it or just say I'm 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 full of it or whatever but they they can't they cannot apply the law and they won't it was very telling when we understood the distinction between property and commerce and regulation and a Pacific Legal Foundation would not take our mining district case because they wanted to shove it through the administrative side, and they didn't recognize what we were doing. It, it, it confirmed everything we knew back then about what the problem is. Remember I told you the attorneys are not trained on disposal law. They're not trained on this stuff. They're not trained on patents. I'll tell you, they don't even know they exist at some level. In fact, I think one state, the attorneys, the whole bar association, denounced the, even the word. And if I remember right, that's the same. that was the same state that in their constitution used the term allodial, which I was told in my research, I had never found it, but one of my listeners long back, long time back explained that the word allodial or allodium or whatever it was is in the Constitution. Why don't these attorneys know that? That's the, that's the secret and the trick. So, too many agencies have found it easy to impose costly and excessive mandates through informal interpretations buried on their websites instead of going through the regular public review process. Congress requires the agency rules, uh, acting officer uh, that the group, that the Congress requires the agency rules. So this is what we attack. We know all the guys I know and my our my own our own mining claim, my, the co-owner and myself. We've never been imposed by any of this stuff ahead of time. Why? Because we essentially have, have been applying what these EOs already uh, give you now permission to do. Uh, anyway, I, I could read. I should have maybe read it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what effect and cause this is. You can read for yourself. You can now listen to what I've just talked to you about. Read through this. There's more stuff to learn. Not all of it's wrong, um, but some of it is. You can learn if you have an eye, an ear, an eye, a, a mind uh, to see, uh, to hear this. You will realize there's a two tracks. One is within the administrative state, and one is uh, without the administrative state which is in your property rights, and the one in the administrative now you're giving permission within the context of the administrative state to challenge whether or not they actually are able to come across and touch your disposed property. That on itself is a really big deal. My, my concern is most people don't understand how that actually wields, and they don't understand that they can use this to actually extricate themselves from a fraudulent demand by the agency. So let me... Uh, I've given you two links and here are three links. Uh, there's another in PAYGO, the third one that came up. Executive Order of Increasing Government Accountability for Administrative Actions by Reinvigorating Administrative PAYGO uh, from the White House. You can see all this stuff. It's going through the Office of Budget and Management. It's in addition to the other two. Again, we can. you will have to look at your problem and you will have to structure your statement relative to the actions of the agency as being outside of their authority and therefore the money could not have been budgeted that it w is being used this policy this this habit and custom that they're now have developed is a, a, across the country what they're doing to people and this becomes a misappropriation of public funds they're not acting inside their money the appropriated to do their lawful stuff they're acting outside and that's always going to be a misappropriation and so you can incorporate the third EO here uh, if, when you understand a bit. Now, these EOs, the, not that there's a problem, but there's a formality. And you have to understand that there's elements, as I've been telling you. Start dealing in the elements of what you see. Don't define it as a work. Just go about and fulfill the elements. And as I read through these what EOs here, they, the elements should be able to be fulfilled by anybody, but you'll have to slow down and think about how you bring bring into um, enforcement this this uh, this in, this demand you can place that the agency put on the government on the record that they're in compliance. And you have to state that in a very particular way. It's not because your First Amendment right. It's not because your Fifth Amendment right. No, it's through this EO that you're going to just replicate, copy and paste the demand, explain short, in a short order how you invoke that and that they need to do it. Now, see, you're still telling them and invoking some discretion on some other parties, and that's why I say it's not really the proper way, but it's better than when you find out about the Drake's oyster bed, they lost, you know, $60 million loss, and businesses, and the harvest is gone, and the production is gone. 
on something that really wasn't doing anything and it was just a big environmental you know, hit is all that was ultimately and so we'll keep moving here I'll give you the links to the executive orders uh, page a lot of this wasn't even up by the when I, I found it here later but it wasn't up when I started to find out about this another thing from Pacific Legal Foundation I wanted you to read it just because this is part of what they do President signs executive orders bringing more accountability to the federal agencies. I give a link to the video where he goes through and explains this thing. You need to hear that, why they did it. It's not the full the whole thing, but they do mention Pacific Legal Foundation. Pacific Legal Foundation does some good work. They do defend people against the, uh, the slam dunk that an agency would do based on all this nonsense that they do. I want you to hear that that's not really the total answer either. And that, that a lot of these things could be avoided or they would set the record in a much more positive way for the property owner have, if they wouldn't subject it to uh, the deference of an agency. The fact that you hear in the prior article that this is to force the agency to, discuss, to uh, find their, in some manner their jur lawful jurisdiction is exactly the point I've been talking about. If they can't establish it, if no one challenges that, that is presumed to them. And then you just kind of go down the path and get beat up. Once that becomes the focus and you know how to, how to pin them down, not because you're wrestling with them, you just pin them down. They're just a big boulder comes down on them, and if they can't lift the boulder, they're trapped. They're stuck in the mouse trap that they can't get out of. As soon as that you throw that on them, it's really lights out for them if you, if you know. So why haven't the attorneys been doing this up front? Again, the purpose is to require the jurisdiction be declared. Why wasn't that done up front by these attorneys in the past? This EO even has to come out. And then, uh, again, I'm, maybe I'll toot my horn a little. Toot, toot, toot my horn here. I've been telling you this condition for years and decades and longer when I was writing about it. So, Pacific Legal Foundation, kudos for protecting the people to bring the issue, but they have always failed to assert the property against the grant and against the condition that the agency could never have it. No matter, you can't un take away the property rights by a definition for things like the waters of the United States either. For making ponds on your own land, which are pertinent to the grant that you got from the government signed by the President and Congress. When did the agent administrator state have an authority to do any of that, that the attorneys haven't been pushing that, that any property owner doesn't throw that up in the first place, and then attack the Bar Association member that denies it in the form of a judge, attack him for subverting your property rights as well, being that he also has, or she, has an obligation and duty to protect it, and he, and that he or she interfered with the patent, which in, if you look closely in your state, you'll find the, the, the legislature didn't give the right to interfere with a modify a patent to a judge and the imposition of that through a federal uh, federal uh, administrative state uh, demand is is crime it's crime of the highest levels it's a trust breach beyond folks and we've lost the sensitivity to that it's just so many words to most people see and that's another definition if you can't trust no more there is no government it has no purpose when I was talking last week about a challenging all this stuff about national security, that's one of the things you will be throwing in. That's what I keep telling you about. They've lost their purpose because they've lost the trust. Not your, just your trust, that's no one more thing, but the trust. The whole reason for being is gone. And they don't, their, opera, their, their, their cultures and habits and customs now don't intend, don't appear to intend to do anything. In fact, now that I'll be moving here to this next story about these things, this becomes this little issue about the intention and the promise becomes important. Now, the intention and promise on our end isn't very good because that means that the court's allowing a, a violation to continue instead of the hard and fast trust uh, obligations, and that's a serious problem. So, where this so EZOs are very very valuable, they instruct you on how you're going to be able to begin to challenge the uh, the agencies. It's a may because you may not do that right. I've been suggesting to you uh, of ways that we do it that have been successful. I haven't found them. I'm trying to think when do we lose one. There's there's no time that when we apply this these very things before they're, you're given permission here that, that they, the agency can uh, can do anything. No, the point is once they do, if they do anything, then they are that criminal, but you see you've told them. And so now that's that, that reverse notice thing. 
so very important. Lots of quite a few numbers of things that anybody can pick from as well in this. And all I can tell you is that f uh, for you, if you didn't hear it from me, if you didn't understand it, if you didn't know, it's relevant to you, to my listener, everywhere there might be property. And I'm you know, at some point I'm not just talking about land here as well. You, yourself in the forest, yourself doing certain things. You know, when I walk into a look into a, even the un we can certainly challenge now up front the, the, prob the wrong promulgation of the 228s, can't we? It's not a question now, right? When it's written, see, it's not a question. They make it a question. But when I walk in and I look at the code, and I say, but the 228s are not relevant to a, a, a private property entry like a miner has, they'll argue with you. But the fact is, get away from the fact they're not promulgated. The current ones are not promulgated. We would have to resort back to the prior ones, which acknowledge that the private property owner has the determination, which shows you the, uh, the agenda moving to remove property. Uh, but uh, we can attack the 228s. But when you go in and you find out this little fork in the road between special use and, and uh, specific use. And I said, but we're not, we're not the special use required to get these permits. When you start thinking like this, this is all what the EOs tell you to do you start to now find your rights again. And the administrative state is vast, and the administrative state has been powerful. The administrative state has really done a lot of damage to this country, and Trump was right to control it, but he didn't go far enough. And I think they think they were clever about how they did this. All they did is just put it in, in fact and to give you the knowledge that you do have the, you have the obligation, essentially, to challenge them. And now they're making it okay for you to do that, and then you have some black and white thing to say, here, this is what the president said, you do it. That's still not acknowledging your property and rights in the first instance, though, is it? No, it's guiding you on the due process you should have already known and implemented before you got there. And so to that, I applaud it. I applaud it because it's going to guide people. I hope lots of ranchers and uh, business owners uh, that have to suffer these agencies uh, have an answer for themselves now. Maybe more to the attorneys that have been violation, violating these trusts as well under the color of helping doing justice. Uh, just a, it's an ongoing crime, folks. Everywhere, as I look at it, it's kind of hard not to uh, not to see it everywhere at some level. And you start to think about yourself. But you know, wherever I go, I can put my I can ground myself in the law of the land, and I can look at what they're doing and show how they fall short. It's really easy when you finally see this stuff. It's not a discussion, really. I talk a lot here, but there's not a discussion. We move on now to something that's really the difficult one. What happened to this country and what people allowed? Why partly I go to crickets now. It started way back here in 2001, uh, but we had uh, lots of laws made. And there's been a recent court ruling. What's interesting is... Uh, what you can glean from something that was supposed to be a secret court. You know, there's not supposed to be no secret courts, but there's these secret courts uh, where you don't have an ASA or an input or an inspection uh, that has been set up around uh, national security. And I told you that's a fraud. And so you, there's, it's very difficult. In fact, this, now this next case we'll be talking about, this decision where it says the court ruling shows the FBI abused NSA mass surveillance. It's like, okay, everyone that knows about this is, oh, yeah, well, we know that. Well, this is not the point. The point is to figure out how to interject a defense against uh, really just a tyranny, an ob abject tyranny, something beyond what anything was supposed to happen. The defeat of your cons of your laws uh, underneath the claim of a national security, which is a fabricated condition anyway, as I've been telling you. Why I thought this was even more important was because it gives us insight. And any of you that would like to step up, and you want to go against this, you have here now a guidance on how to proceed, what to think about, how to start to situate your record, uh, what's being done, and what the admission is inside this court case. Lots of people are focusing on the fact that they're, this case, uh, let me read a little bit here first, uh, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court found the FBI may have, may have violated the rights of potentially millions of Americans, including its own agents and informants, by improperly searching through information obtained by the NSA, a National Security Agency's mass surveillance program. Let me just stop. That's the context here. Uh, but when you see inside this case, you see this question. This is from The Intercept, which is why I also don't like this thing. Uh, the guy who should have wrote this article was an attorney, didn't write the article, and I think there's a reason why. And I don't know this guy who did write the article, write the article whether he's an attorney or not. 
But this word may have violated was very interesting to me uh, to say. May have violated? Did the court make such a nebulous finding? Why would this report come out to say may? What's the? Who cares if it's just a may, right? So there's a there's a big uh, psyop in this whole thing. But we've got to look through some of that. What do you, what do we do? Well, we go to the black and white of the decision, and we uh, get past our idea that even those of us that knew, we, I mean, Snow Job, Snowden, right? I mean, this was all set out to tell us this was happening, so you'd all go to sleep. You did. I went to crickets, and so here we are today. Confirmation. We finally get the fact of the thing we knew, but not because of an opinion. We get how they go about not doing what they're doing. And what you need to go and read this 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 case, and I didn't read it all. I wasn't going to read any of it, but okay, I couldn't help myself. I read some of it, and uh, well, enough to glean some things out of it. That you have to read in here to see the... Now, it's easy to say, oh, the courts are corrupt and all that, because they are, and they're not doing us any favors, which they're not. But you have to know how. You have to know and see how the attorneys are involved in doing this. And they're not the only focus on here either, but they, they seem to be the main players that keep fo coming up. The judge is an attorney. The attorneys are attorneys. Uh, the amicus they talk about in this case, the amici, are attorneys. And they're the only ones that, that have a say, and their intellect is the only input that we'll ever get. And when you find out that they may be, remember now, they're trained in special ways. I've told you, they don't talk about property when they don't train about property and your property rights. Where's the law of the land there? They're not talking about the law of the land here either, and they won't. Oh, they have interesting concerns, and they have very valid concerns, but they're not the concerns that maybe you and I would have. The ones suffering underneath the so-called national security imperative, where all of a sudden the surveillance society is, is blossoms after 2000 and in one, and you see within this court case uh, how what they're doing, what they're allowing. What you don't hear in this report, and I was going to read this a little bit more. This comes out of a Judge uh, Bossberg. I don't know if I have enough time to read so much though in this broadcast is the problem. Uh, I've done it before. I take broadcast after broadcast, but uh, many people don't don't listen. So. It's no no sense. I don't see why I should. Uh, if you're interested, I guess you go to it. But you know, it's a 138-page opinion. Uh, these opinions reveal devastating problems with the FBI's backdoor searches, which often resembled phishing expeditions through America's personal emails and online messages. Your personal emails and online messages, and they also got direct messaging type thing, instant messaging. Uh, the, you hear this whole surveillance thing has been underway, and what they've been allowing you. We need to read this court case because. You need to see what the judge explains that the government's attorneys are saying is their right to do so. You also need to read that it, not only, well, let me read what, it, what the problem, what, or the real problem here that, that was promoted is important to understand. When you hand the, uh, the ty tyrant a, a baseball bat, he's going to go use it. And, uh, and there's no real way to stop that. And there's no real way that the non-independent judiciary of the government itself is going to check much of it either. Now, I have a proof of that beyond this, these statements here by the judge. The court, accordingly, based on the facts that he talks, at page 61, finds that the FBI query procedures do not comport to section 702F. I'll just leave some of the numbers off. You can go find this. Page 62, FBI query practice and statutory and constitutional requirements. The court next independently finds, at page 62, that the, that the uh, FBI's repeated non-compliant queries of Section 702 information, a one, a determination that it, its minimization and query procedures are reasonably designed to minimize the retention and prohibit the dissemination of private information concerning U.S. persons consistent with the government's foreign intelligence needs, and two, a finding that such procedures are consistent with the requirements of the Fourth Amendment. He could not find that. They were not consistent. But that's not their right to do so. You gotta be very careful if you go read this case. It's their essentially their record keeping function that isn't compliant. So I'm gonna so cut to the chase of that. It means they're doing it, folks. They're doing all this stuff in the under the court's permission that they continue to do this. 
He's finding these don't uh, these aren't aren't meeting the requirements. If you look closely at the case, they don't feel they need to stop anything at this point. The court finds that the FBI's page 80 analysis, the court, and there's quite a few analyses, you have to go through the whole case, but you'll find them here and there. The court finds, now, where's the holding, folks? I don't, I don't see it. This article, we're talking about what this thing may, it says may have violated. The court found that they may have. Well, here's what the court said it found is fines. The court finds that the FBI Section 702 minimization procedures, as they have been implemented, are not consistent with the requirements of Section 1801H and or the Fourth Amendment. So that's the finding. It's not may have violated the rights of millions of Americans. It says that their process is violative of the Fourth Amendment in that section. Oh, keep going ahead and doing it. It's just it's your process. And we're going to, and the amicus, the amnesty is going to be telling us what the suggestion is that we need to, to bring us more close to comporting with the requirements of the Fourth Amendment. You'll also not notice anything like I told you before about the attorneys not uh, always bringing you subject to the administrative. There's no real assertion of your rights and presumptions that you hold prior to the application of the presumptions of the administration here, in this case, the DOJ. Your presumption of innocence is in balance with the national needs. You'll, you, it's almost, well, I guess it's kind of scary you read how they go about justifying this tyranny. That said, it gives you the reasons what they're using to do this that you, I, as my mind started working through some of us, if I was to focus on it, where I might start to try and bring uh, something with the caveat that you're going to need a toehold They've made it so it's very difficult to get at this because these are the secret courts supposedly looking out for your welfare and they're really just a bunch of bar members having a discussion on how they're going to continue to create their surveillance state and advance things like uh, the Internet of Things, which is all a surveillance state, isn't it? Faster through 5G, see? The Page 84B, Fourth Amendment deficiency applying... The totality of circumstances analysis, the FISC, the court employed in the previous Section 702 proceedings, the court finds that the FBI minimization procedures and querying procedures are simply re uh, similarly unreasonable under the Fourth Amendment. So the procedures of how they collect are, un are violative of the Fourth Amendment, but that they're doing it isn't. Page 88, reasonableness under the totality circumstance, of circumstance, and this totality of circumstance becomes a pivot point because the amicus that's written to try and protect all of us against this encroachment had a different pathway of reasons that the court rejects but nonetheless takes on this totality of circumstances view and comes to the same conclusion. That's important for you to look at because when you address the courts, you're going to have to look at what the standard is that they're going to choose and you speak to that, not what you think. And so these are guidances. No, I say go to the court. If you speak in this way to an administrative condition, you're going to kill it. You're going to just knock it out because you're already they, they already see you coming before you go that they're not going to be able to survive all this on lesser things. The reason most under the totality of circumstances, under the totality of circumstances approach, a court must balance, quote, now here, listen carefully, folks, balance. Well, there's balance in everything, right? There's no right that stands against uh, an opposition to anything, it seems. I've been explaining to you how there are, and I've been saying that, uh, saying that you're going to have to Im ex ex uh, impose those because, or assert those because you're not going to get an attorney to absolutely do that at all. No, there's always this balance. And here it is again. You find it in NEPA, the uh, National Environmental Policy Act. You find it in the imposition of what the balance might have to be with regard to environmental concerns and relative to what the agencies will do in management. It's all sitting us here. Balance is what, what though? Balance becomes also risk management, too, if you notice. Right, so these are all these principles I talk about are all inside here being spoken to, and they don't tell you that. But when you know that, you start reading this thing a little bit different. And I guess that's where I would uh, distance myself, and not only mean better. I'm just saying I would distance myself with anybody else's thought, where my mind starts to apply all these things. I come up with different insights, but whether they're applicable or not is not the point. They're just insights that I told you I put in categories and possibilities and potentials as I'm working through. What are the possibilities? What are the potentials? What might? What do we have? What don't we have? What do we? What what path is blocked to us, or at least 
in such a way that it's not really worth going after more uh, unless finding uh, rather than finding an easier path so uh, page 88 the reasonableness balance here the the balance is that quote the degree to which bracket government action intrudes upon the individual's privacy against the degree to which it is needed for the promotion of legitimate governmental interests the more important the government's interest the greater the intrusion that may be constitutionally tolerated now you go back and you think about that there is some logic about why but you realize when they're saying it that way the court is only having to look for any stated um, idea that follows the term promoting the government interest and you'll realize the court's going to go with it why because there's no actual response is there in that closed court so uh, it's the Spanish it's the special words I feared for my life and they get to kill you is we're talking right here does not pretend well in this court case notwithstanding their procedures for the surveilling are not matching this uh, the the Fourth Amendment and that is it when you read on is all oh, okay we're gonna uh, there's nothing so extru ex extraneous here that we you uh, haven't claimed you're working to fix in the meantime they're they're explaining to you they're violating the Fourth Amendment and there's no immediate fix page 91 the FICR has observed that quote the government's investigative interests in cases arising under FISA is at the highest level and weighs heavily in the constitutional balancing process the court must also consider however the degree to which the government action is in question is needed for the promotion of the relevant governmental interest that equivocation is your only in I've told you before when they went to national security you were going to be hard pressed to get a higher right a higher uh, um, need the requirement though is you will have to find that if you in, intend to get beyond over the prejudice this courts already given when I read that that the, the government's getting the highest level I realized we weren't going to see much in this court case actually and when you read through some of it, I only parts I read I could tell that uh, the government does not come. The 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 amicus, uh, the friend of the court brief that they allowed in law to be there to be the, another conscious consciousness toward this, does not have any challenge to this position. And what have I said to you in the law of the land? You you have your right of the land based on the, for those of you that can point to a patent, that are the grant or grant uh, grant tours obligations to you which were disposed to you at the highest of all interests why you can find state laws that say use of water for mining is the public benefit the public use and a public interest and there's another one the highest folks is these are the things I've been talking about when you come in and state that with your property this is what we're talking is protected by the court when you don't or you don't argue that it is the highest and show how you're disregarded to the level you'll find in this case so this case is a window insight into the most severe interpretations against you in every in every capacity as I've explained before now, I think that's the only reason why I'm bringing this thing out I mean this is really not news it's uh, you need to know how they violate you that gives you an in insight on how, what you need the record you need to make in order for you to give a chance to prevail uh, in the beginning of the broadcast I'm saying you stay away from the jurisdiction that doesn't have it you call it out for the crime it is in this case the highest level already beats you okay so you're gonna have to make a, a higher statement it wasn't made in this case and so the, the, the it's gonna fall down a hill from here but the court must also consider however the degree to which the government actual in question is needed needed is necessity folks the word needed 
you have to find the necessity is not what it is, or as I've been trying to show you, find, give the elements to show, the facts to show that it's just a pretense or pretext to be able to feloniously attach these things and then show your interest as well as being a, a needed, not a promotion, but a requirement. I say re obligation to the government. We're not promoting an interest. You're actually violating a bunch of obligations. That's why I kind of turned this before. I said, when, when the go federal government, with all of its power, allowed the buildings to be attacked, I really don't care how they came down. The federal government allowed those buildings to be attacked. And then they made a fabrication of who done it. And then they went to war over the, overseas, and we were made vulnerable. The people of America were blamed for their dereliction. And now they, you can now set the stage that says, now they have a, mo a reason to cover up that dereliction. That, and that cannot be the need promoted underneath the color of a governmental interest, I think is a better statement than just saying that, that you're doing is wrong, even beyond saying you're in derelict. So you've got to explain what that is. I think I just gave you a short sentence on how to begin to attack this whole thing. Uh, this Again, this case gives us the insight of um, a, a, ca um, a court that really ought not be private, uh, but, but that is. And um, I don't know what to say. It's a do difficult thing. I told you they got there before we did. That's all I can tell you. Um, we, there was reasons. Uh, I told you this. I was broadcasting about it. Someone helped. Again, I mean, if anybody would have come up and said, I, I can put some time into this, boy, I would have been jumping on that with, to help you out uh, like I do anybody, um, just because it would take a, it would take quite a few people to pull this together. But nobody did. And and so we have a, a big disconnect. I went to crickets then by, the tw by 2012, uh, even though we knew by 2010 they were, you were all going to be made criminals. And that's the other thing. This case is silent to the fact of what the the uh, 702 does, and I'm going to get to that in a second. What I do want to read, one page from this I think is instructive a bit, on uh, number 5, I think it's page 133, uh, and I'm just looking down now, my dog Rex, I, I don't have the link to this, um, just look, uh, just what would be the title, I'll give the title to this, uh, to this is, uh, look, type, type in the search engine, court ruling shows how FBI abused NSA mass surveillance. I think you can get the link to the court case in that link, although I don't remember right now. I uh, apologize. Too much stuff to keep up with. But uh, Okay, well, I'm going to read here. With respect, number five, with respect to information acquired underneath the 2018 certification, and there's another thing, every it goes through and be, all this stuff gets certified and re-upped and re-upped and re-upped. That's another weakness, if you will. Uh, there should be checks, and I don't don't know all the paths on how you could invoke this. It may be having to go back through the Congress to stop it. Uh, but as long as they have 2001 and they've got the uh, NDAA going the way it is, it's going to be difficult. It uh, doesn't mean that we can't engage and throw people at this and do it more correctly. Um, that, the way I'm kind of leading, I'm leading you through how to start that, there's going to be more thoughts that have to come to this and more, maybe better, more intelligent people than me will have the, the better uh, concise answer once they see how this thing uh, is working through. Because they say the howevers and the notwithstandings, you, that's your in. That's how you start to, uh, uh, you pick at this thing. Uh, you, you and I may not ever be involved with one of these things. We don't know. We probably are, actually. We can't get at it because they got that wired. But until you, you broach the idea that their governmental interest is a, is a color of imposition and frame it in the context of a felony, as I've told you any other authority might try to do, to take your rights and property, you don't have the you don't have the first step, and if you get that first step, now you get to go to the next one. And so this is like I asked, I've said before in the analogy of got across the creek or a river, uh, I, I can only lay a stone down at a time to to be able to get across that, and that's how this is done. I've got a, a torrent of of tyranny, and I've got to cross it. And so the only thing I can do is lay rocks down, foundational rocks down as I try to cross this river. And the more working on that, will be the faster we get to do it. And we'll anyway. So, with respect to the information acquired during uh, under the 2018 certification as amended, the minimization procedures. Remember now, this is just the procedures, not that the surveillance is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Just the procedures. So they're they're willing to have the right and still violate you is the other thing. 
minimization procedures and query procedures to be implemented by the FBI are consistent with the requirements of 702 and Section 702F, respectively, and of the Fourth Amendment, except insofar as they are inconsistent with. And so they are saying the rest of this thing that they've been doing behind everybody's back and all their excuses. When you read these excuses, they're as lame as they could be, but they're justified because there's no one actually going after the need, are there? So they get what they want because you don't have an input. This is, the, I guess, the most n concentrated form of evil and alternative dispute resolution I've ever seen is in these cases. But then going on, except insofar as this. So the rest of the program is quite fine under the Fourth Amendment all that surveillance that they, they're doing on you. To go after people that are collateral damage to their investigations that are supposed to be only for foreign, you so-called foreigners that are doing foreign intelligence. You'll see the standard here. How they're able to so-called do a loophole and have the law be interpreted to provide a loophole that's a, that's a violation of the Fourth Amendment is a wonder to me. That was an attack. In other words, your rights are not first. This governmental tyranny is such a high bar that they've set against you, and no one's argued that it can't be, that this prevails and continues. So insofar as they are inconsistent with the record-keeping requirements of 702, because they do not require the FBI to keep records or the United States person query terms used to conduct queries under Section 702 information in the manner that fairly identifies United States person query terms as such or differentiates them from other terms used to query Section 702 information and B, the requirements of 702E and 702F respectively and of the Fourth Amendment because they do not require adequate documentation of the justification of the queries to use United States person query terms. In those respects, the court finds deficiencies in the procedures within the meaning of the Section 702J. On and on it could go. Lots of words. The point is that lots of words to say, oh, you're just not taking your notes correctly. No, no one gets to see all that. If you go read through the case, you'll see it's not loopholes. These are absences of uh, interjection of due process. And the courts are admitting here that they aren't really there to protect us. Given that they've set the highest bar without any consideration that there's a not a need, because they've also applying the sovereign prerogative, which is a, really a fraud again, against a presumption that they get to do what they get to do, without the right and ability to rebut, which is another attack you can do, they get to go through and validate that this, except for their note-taking, is, is not violent, violative of the Fourth Amendment. I think it's being missed completely by most of the stories. And what's the, what's the important of all this is because when you find out about what they're note-taking in, they're talking about this relative to people that are for foreign, uh, foreign intelligence, yet all the stuff that they gather up and collaterally attack, or collaterally gather up in store, they can use in criminal cases and it doesn't have to have the standard, which defeats your protections underneath the, uh, your defense rights as well. That's allowed too. That's what's being missed in this whole thing. They give us, if you wanted to know where we went, we go to the Title 50. I keep telling you this is all underneath the military. The, the attorneys in the, under the military rule rule you. Well, you. Go to Title 50. I don't make this stuff up. They keep telling you the court case. Go to Title 18, uh, uh, Title 50, Section 1881 and find the definitions. You find all kinds of inter interesting definitions. I started to get into a discussion. I had all kinds of tabs which I removed and deleted from my tabs to not talk about because it became so convoluted to explain on the air I decided I couldn't do it. When they talk about this United States person, you really have to look closely at this. You really have to look closely at whether or not your information is actually in, 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 in foreign intelligence information. Uh, the problem is, is you don't have a right to go question it and they made it so that you can't get at it. I think there is ways. I've talked to you about a few of the small of them, but you have to be in the right place to do that. 
It goes to Title 50, um, the Title 50 U.S. Code Section 1801, more definitions. They, they go and they define the United States. They go and define the United States person. I want to know, underneath a confederation that this, this state was, uh, this, this uh, nation was started under, where's the United States of America in their definitions when they respond to a United States person? Where's the confederation in all this that these people are doing this out of the district? And you'll notice this judge is talking out of Washington, D.C. I didn't qualify which court he was in, so I don't know whether or not he's a domesticated court out of, out, of, out of the circuit there. But all this is to be, uh, all this can be viewed, all this can be studied. And I, and my people are, you know, you're rolling your eyes back. You change the channel, whatever. You didn't hear me say that because you're gone. But these are the things that I read that inform me on what the, where the, what, where this place went, and at least give me an idea that I, if if we could get together as a people, we would have a place to go. We certainly would have, we would have the masses. You want to go riot in the streets? It terrifies them. You would riot inside their 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 White House, it would, under the White Dome. It terrifies them that you would get together to do all this this way and make a record before you did. To invalidate everything they've been doing. Again, dereliction is not a need and compelling interest. Covering up dereliction is not a need uh, or compelling interest of the government. The only other point you have to do is actually develop uh, how that is a how dereliction is the point and what they're trying to cover up. So you go through this case and. You, you find out this is, you know, this is promoted as a big deal uh, because they expose to you they're violating the Fourth Amendment. What it doesn't tell you is how they're violating you anyway, almost, almost with that, because of the discussion that they've explained. What is, uh, what is Section 702? Let's get some context maybe for you all. Maybe that they would help. Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, uh, FISA, FISA, no, you don't, shouldn't actually pronounce that, but it's FISA, is a statute that authorizes the collection, use, and dissemination of electronic communications content stored by the United States Internet Service Cor Providers, stored by the United, Internet, United, United States Internet Service Providers, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. So, U.S. United States Internet is their Internet services, folks. If you didn't think about the intelligence service, isn't the Internet, uh, Internet of Things, folks, and go faster, 5G, or traveling across the Internet's backbone with the compelled assistance of the United States telecom providers such as AT&T and Verizon. This article was written before the sunset of 2017, but that's been re-upped with some additional changes. They talk about those in this court case. But you realize that the changes are not, they're not being complied with, and that's okay. The court sees that the government is intending to make changes, and that's good enough, while they violate your rights all this time. That should have been a slam dunk shutdown, and it's not. It tells you that this is not set up, in, it's set up for the military is what it's set up for. Uh, this article goes, are there any restrictions? Unlike traditional FISA surveillance, Section 702 does not require that surveillance targets be a suspected terrorist, spy, or other agent of the foreign power. Section 702 only requires the targets to be non-U.S. persons located abroad and that a significant purpose of the surveillance to be obtained, quote, foreign intelligence information, close quote, the primary purpose of the surveillance can be something else. And if you go through this court case, it's a secret... Uh, a lot of it's blocked out. It's all redacted. A lot of it's redacted. You can't read lots of it. But anyway, you can read enough. And you go through, and this is, uh, was to be top secret. It's now been let out. Uh, you start using, if you read this article that I'm providing here that I'm reading, you'll see these words and terms used by the attorneys and saying, again, they put this term out, and it covers all sins, essentially. And the, and the court inquires a bit about it. The amicus argues a bit against it. And the court comes up with what it sees as a, as a problem and, and continues the surveillance doesn't provide for innocent people to be innocent of the the right of, asso of not to associate with this thing. Because the bar has been set so high that the governmental interest to know about you trumps your right of innocence. It can't be a governmental interest that's the highest bar. Because that then means what? They've turned everybody into criminals and they're just waiting to catch you. 
Well, guess what, folks? Go read the P-A-T-R-I-O-T Act. I've talked about this forever. They started out as misdemeanors. Now they made it a felony. So that you, if you do any of these criminal acts, or they suspect you of that, or they have evidence of collateral uh, of evidence of that, they can keep you on record. You're talking about certification in that case. So certification on the annual basis, the Attorney General and the Director of National Intelligence makes certifications authorizing 702 surveillance programs and submits these certifications to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court for approval. Well, they've already given the government the highest bar. And there's no counter rebuttal. They say right in the case, in the parts, the pages I read, that they provide the government's answer to your rights is a presumption that they have the right. Told me all I need to know about this court because you have no right to enter in to rebut their presumption to stop the the uh, the tyranny essentially. They don't work on law; they're working on presumptions they've given to themselves, and that's okay with this court. These certifications, one, identify the categories of foreign intelligence information to be gathered, and two, contain targeting procedures and the minimization procedures, which is talked about in that court case, approved by the AG that are meant to ensure 702 acquisition is limited to non-U.S. person abroad. The whole court case is about how it's not limited to non-U.S. persons, and it's okay. The uh, three attests that the targeting and minimization procedures are additional guidelines adopted to ensure compliance are consistent with the Fourth Amendment. You'll hear in the case, they aren't, and that's pretty much okay. Why? Because the government has expressed an intention to make it better. Four, certification is to attest that a significant purpose of the program is to obtain foreign intelligence information. Where are Americans that aren't involved with all this involved? How are they involved with all this? How are you and my listeners involved with all this on that alone? And yet, you are. Five, the attempt to attest that the, the program uses a U.S. electronic communication service provider. And six, attest that the program complies with the limitations spelled out by the statute, which when you read what the limitations are, is really just one of uh, answered, immunity, answered by presumption, uh, spe special words, and uh, erroneous reporting, which is okay. Violates the Fourth Amendment, but it's okay. You're working to stop that. And it's been going on for decades now, folks. Uh, if all the certification elements are present and the minimum requirements of the targeting and minimization procedures are met, the FIC, uh, FISC, the court, must approve the 702 surveillance program. The FISC plays no role in making the uh, actual targeting decisions, such as decisions are made by such decisions are made by the NSA and the nominations from the CIA and FBI. Nominations is an interesting word there. I won't go through it. Acquisition. There are currently two forms of, of a 702 collection. Prism. Snow job Snow to told us all about it. You all went to sleep. Prism collection. The government collects all the communications content to or from the targeted sele selector, such as an email address, directly from U.S.-based electronic communication service providers such as Apple or Google. The NSA receives all raw, unminimized Prism collected information and may also send such raw data to the CIA and the FBI. Receives all raw, unminimized Prism data collected data. Yeah, and they, uh, when you go read the case, they say that the NSA is actually in compliance with the Fourth Amendment on all this. They're just not have the court's just not happy with the FBI and their note taking. Upstream collection: the government collects all internet transactions that contain communications to, from, or about. And the word "about" here is in quotes. This is another condition in the court case. The abouts was discussed. A target selector as the transactions flow through the network gateways controlled by U.S.-based providers. Only the NSA may receive raw upstream collected information, but it may send such information to the CIA and FBI once it has gone through the NSA's minimization process. And that touch a bit on the collection of uh, FBI records that they have, that they got so much that they got too much. And what are they going to do with, the, with this problem and how to, how to juggle that is in the case as well as, a, as an additional concern of the court. 
but the concerns are already given the highest part of the government under excuse and special uh, the special words uh, such as I'm I feared for my life and then they get to shoot you and kill you querying and and use in criminal cases and this is where you need to listen they're talking about these US non-US persons and in foreign intelligence well 702 querying information and data government databases the NSA CIA and FBI are permitted to query 702 acquired information by using a variety of search terms each individual agency's own minimization procedures limit the search terms that analysts can use however it is unclear how these policies are enforced well that's made a little clearer in this court case uh, but as I said, that they uh, they know violations are going on, and they're just not happy with the way the with way with the way the FBI is taking notes on their reasoning underlying why they're doing the search. And they admitted in the case they could just go ahead and get a, essentially give a cover underneath the, the the statute, put the special term in there, and that would do it. And that would have to then be scrutinized later by the court, which we find out never will be because you find in that court case that there's been an ongoing unremedied un problems. The backdoor search loophole, which I've said, I don't know how you can have interpret, judiciary could interpret Congress as making such a loophole that would allow a violation of the fourth, and yet they've allowed this. The NSA, CIA, and FBI are all permitted to search a 702 acquired information with U.S. person identifiers such as names or addresses. Critics have dubbed this the backdoor search loophole because it enables the government to obtain information that would have that would have otherwise required a warrant. Today, the NSA and CIA can only query 702 gathered information with a U.S. person identifier after creating a quote statement of fact showing that a query is reasonably likely to return foreign intelligence information. Close quote. However. This restriction does not apply to the FBI. And that's what this case was about. This restriction didn't apply, and the, uh, the FBI was uh, not doing taking those notes, and the court saying, we want you to start taking those notes. Now, you can do it by writing. You don't have to have a technical need, to, a technical uh, d device to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll take you, you just got to write down what the statement of facts is that the query is reasonable. And they agreed, uh, the, the attorneys on the government side said, well, we can... There's no problem with them just going ahead and stating that on the record. Right? Because it doesn't mean anything, really. They've already been given the highest the highest protection and highest bar and not given you any chance to uh, rebut the presumption, have they? Their presumption trumps your right to remain innocent, your right to free association, your right to uh, defend yourself, all kinds of things. I don't even want to go through them. You, you can make them up in your own head what you're being violated on. But here it is. All it is is a statement of facts showing the query is reasonable. And when you see the, you see what their reasoning is and how they go about doing it, there's no reason behind it. And then only if it gets if it gets caught. The U.S. Uh, use in criminal court. Everyone, listeners. 702 acquired information may be used as evidence against U.S. persons in criminal court for certain broad categories of serious crimes. Let me remind you the Patriarch said a misdemeanor could bring you into enemy combatant status, and that to me would be a serious crime relative to why these laws exist. That's presumed as well, otherwise they would give you a chance to rebut that as well and give you access to those records. But they're all top secret. And if you don't see a problem with this, where you get to the point where their their dereliction allowed them to be cause you to be a problem, develop you into a criminal, and further abuse you, then you're missing the whole point. Essentially, as I told you years and years ago, the reason for the government has ended. You now live under tyranny, and you have no remedy for that unless you stop it. You stand up and stop it. This is not the cricket time. How we're going to go about doing that? may have been uh, subtly limited by the Civil War, which uh, the people lost. But we'll see. I don't know. I find I'm going different paths. There's more paths to go. I'm seeing within the construct of the military consequence, we have ways to defeat that and within their own limitations. So I keep talking. You're looking for the notwithstandings and the, and the savings clauses and provided and the howevers. Look for all that. That's your answers. That's how you get at them. You just got to sit down and figure out how you're going to... Con you're going to create the record that allows it and it defeats them on the one hand and allows you on the other, all at the same time. So, U.S. Uh, use in criminal court, 
702 acquired information may be used as evidence against U.S. persons in criminal court for certain broad categories of serious crimes. For investigations that do not fall into one of those categories, there is no restriction on the use of 702 acquired information to obtain the evidence that can be used in court. Do you have the right to remain silent? I told you this before. You don't have a right to remain silent. They took that right. And the court's okay with that. Remember, the surveillance is not the problem. It's that the note, they didn't keep the right notes on the FBI side. NSA is doing perfectly Fourth Amendment compliant information uh, gathering here. But it can be used against you. The use of information gathered under 702 warrant without a warrant against you as a person creates an end run around the Fourth Amendment, which requires a probable cause finding by an independent body. Well, there are no independent bodies, so you're never going to get that as well. But remember, the story that I'm reading from was that this was a, a notice to you by the Intercept. In other places, this happened to Intercept actually made a nice reading. You go through and read it. If you know what you're looking between the lines, they did a good thing to put the better story. I give you both the ones I first found, and then, the, uh, and then I give you that story. I think I gave you that story instead. I uh, removed the story I first found it. The Intercept does it, but see, the Intercept has an attorney on board, and that guy's not writing this story. And they talked in May when the court said it did, but the May might come in where the surveillance is fully compliant. Creating you into a criminal is fully compliant with the Fourth Amendment. Can you figure that one out? It's just that the FBI didn't make their notes quite right. And somehow that's going to get fixed when they finally do it, because they're not ordered to do it quite yet, because they've, they've pledged to do, more, do better. That the intercept should have come out a little bit more succinct is my problem with all this. Then you read this page, and it tells you that they can use this information in criminal cases against you. It's no longer underneath national security, is it? And this is where I say, say it's an end around. No, this is your judiciary not being the the law the the, ga, the protector in the law. Because innocent people are innocent. There is no extenuating attachments that can be claimed underneath these colorable terms, which are really, in my mind, the color of authority that violates your rights or property and without an actual right. Tied to the dare election that they're trying to cover up, that allowed this whole thing, you now have a phrase, a statement in your mouth that's a little different. This is why I say if you go after the TSA, maybe you're, you're ap actually able to get in there because of this, this top secretness that they've created, secret courts right in your face, and no one was uh, able to, uh, no one's been able to address it. That this is all about coming after you through all this. It has this court case that this, they're expounding all over the fact that it, this one provision violates the fourth is not the intercept telling you, but they can still use this stuff. This case is irrelevant to the fact that they're using all this information they're collecting on the backbone of the internet against you, or for, or worse, for a purpose that you per certainly can't understand, and they make stuff up. We know that too. So. We can keep crickets to them. We can think that it's not important. We can say, what can I do about it? The, again, I, what are you going to do about it? You're going to do nothing, and then I don't know what your complaint is, or you start to work to understand the dynamic that we're under, and you continue to persist anyway and push this tyranny back off of us. And I, you're not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But most of us working, I think, do, or we press the matter, as I've shown before, to a place where the common idea, the common mind of people allows for the change. And we're not persuaded by all the propaganda, the promotion, the promotion of a government interest. They want to promote that it's in the government interest. They said it's going to facilitate the government interest. As soon as you identify that as the cover, the state, the special words is a cover for dereliction and for a cover to circumvent the laws. That's not a need of a governmental interest. Until you get to say that, until you say that, or you find the opportunity to, the attorneys are not. No, they're going to stick you underneath the administrative consequences 
like Pacific Legal Foundation has to get the White House, apparently, because they're the only one referenced, to get the White House to bring out EOs that are only telling you what they ought to have been doing already. And if they, if they ought to have been doing it already, why did Pacific Legal Foundation have to get the White House to make the EO? Why weren't they doing that before? I'm pausing, folks. Can you, does your mind keep up? Is it really engaged? Why do we let these people do this to us? And we have insights in these cases. Top secret's a big deal. To have an insight how they're messing you around is a big deal. If you look at the lo logic, the, the rationale, which is not a rationale, it's just it's the, the way that they're, the plausibility of how they're finagling your life away from you, your freedom, your property, your, 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 your what is it, the, your freedom, not the freedom, the innocence from you. You'll see why they're called liars, lawyers. Why you see, uh, the, what, the Luke 1152, go read it, folks. This is what they do. And those of ourselves that got found a key, they're going to block us. And so that's, okay, That's a, that, we've been told all that. That's not even new. That's thousands of years old in a book. And that guess what? It happens. This is another one of those blocks. We get blocked. And I've said, okay, fine, they're going to try and block us. Let's work around that. And w there's ways, you know, you, you can come up with all kinds of ways to get around these people. They're not that smart. I don't care how smart they think they are. I don't care how they try to call you names when you start catching them. It doesn't matter. But you do have to apply yourself to it. You know, I guess my frustration, I say that, so I get all, I just hear all this, this noise of objection about having to do that, uh, and I'm not saying I like it, uh, but then I still hear the complainers beyond those that won't take action. They're telling us here how they make the records. They're telling us here what they're allowing for as plausible uh, avoidances against exemptions and how they're using exemptions that are in the codes to violate you. They're saying that it's directly applicable to criminal cases. How? How did that not violate your Fourth Amendment right? To, that it can't be an actual loophole. Giving it that name is a violation to you. And yet, there it is. This is something that we're subject to. The title of the PATIRO Act uh, made you an uh, enemy combatant, folks. When you read here that report about what the uh, that little story, the little article telling you what more the 702 section is, is that all this information they gather by whatever means is used in criminal cases against you, and we hear they make up stuff. I don't know why that doesn't conserve, concern everyone that we don't get integrated on how to start to defeat that. I don't understand any uh, that anybody would be okay with it once they figured it out. That's what's actually going on. When you, you know, the, the idea that you can violate an administrative rule, you know, 10,000 of them a day or whatever, that, that should be uh, worrisome. So today we talked about the administrative angle, the, the executive orders that try to mitigate against you, that I say it's already there for you to do. And this other thing, it's also, also applicable to this, this court. This court ends up being an agency as well. If you don't understand the jurisdiction they're talking about. And yet, it won't, that won't come out either. And then when you attach the fraud of it all, well, it's got no basis whatsoever. And those kinds of things, you're not going to a judge to ask. You're actually moving through to tell them that's what's going on. Now, I don't know. I, just, I said that, and I just said, well, I'm just handing people a loaded gun like you think you're going to do something. There's a lot of work behind what I'm saying here. This is the worst thing we could be facing as a people. This is the worst. This is where they used your so-called republic against you. This is no different than how they did uh, alternative dispute resolution. They used your system against you because you weren't using your system. And they took advantage of that void. What do they say? Nature of pores of void? <laughs> well, they filled it. And so, I, again, talking about looking at what people, how they respond. There was an article on the Twitter talking about an article that was presented about how are the urban, the cities, controlling the rural folk, the country folk. How? I've been answering that question for over 10 years, folks. How? And yet no one wants to hear it. 
they do it in secret right in your face. Like in this case, this court case is in secret right in your face now that they've turned it out. No, there's, again, redacted parts. Ridiculous when you look at this. Ridiculous. But but anyway, there's enough in there to start looking at to show you how they are setting, how they've set this thing up to defeat a free people. And again, and I hear crickets. I don't know what more to say. I just like, want to get into an endless loop regarding, uh, I guess it's just apathy. And all the excuses that continue it. It's really pathetic. And then and then I get I get feeling bad for people that I admire greatly because you're great people, but we're pathetic. We're a pathetic, we're a pathetic people in the same in the same regard. Let me talk a little quick here. The my colleagues I was talking about earlier, I didn't mention it earlier. I'll mention it now. A success that we've had. At least one that he is very pleased with this week. Uh, a colleague of mine is a vet. Now, just I'll tell you, I don't know about vet matters. I don't. I told you before the the military didn't want me five times to try, and not because I wasn't capable, because they I figured out that uh, someone told me who was in the military said it's a contract. Make write your contract correctly. Don't let them run your roughshod. And when I figured that out. I started bringing them what I wanted, and they didn't want to see me no more too much. It wasn't because I wasn't capable, because they were actually telling me right before I started doing that. You can have, here's a book, Chick, just pick what you want to do. So it wasn't for me not trying early on, didn't know more, uh, but I never became a vet, never had the opportunity, even whatever. I don't have to deal with veteran matters. I don't have to deal with the Veterans Administration. Well, my colleague does. In fact, he was got an, an operation a couple years ago. It was uh, going to, they put him on a six-month living. It was a can special cancer. And we, he just found out here a couple weeks ago, I think it was, he was telling me that it was a, actually a, a, a special operation that they made. And they only gave him about six months to a year to live. That becomes a problem because a record was made about his existence uh, for a year. And they started actually dismissing him. Problem for them is he lists, it's been two years now. So he's, he's, outlived his, he's outlived their prediction and he still, causes, he still needs the services and he's one of me relative to that. And I want to, I'm saying this not to really explain his condition. I want to explain, and I've told you before, all of these things we are up against are the same method of destruction or interference or intercession of destruction and manipulation and misappropriation of funds. It's all the same. I don't care what subject matter you go. I've told you this over and over. On Today, on a subject matter of veterans, affairs, services, funds, programs, I am got no knowledge other than having... To, to listen and, and help him deal with those on the front end of his getting care. He's also one of our, our guys in the coordination, uh, working with the county. He works with the county people already. He was able to instruct the county people on Veterans Affairs conditions. He's a, a remarkable guy. He was able to show, because we are in our discussion, I said, okay, you need to, I was telling him, he'd show me a problem. And I said, well, you need to look here and here and go track that down. And he would. Uh, to the nth degree, he was able to instruct the people on the ground in the county how they were supposed to be doing this and how the law was supposedly written and how the system was set up to defeat all that and how the people of the state who are supposed to implement a federal program weren't doing it quite right. In fact, the local people cre were, looked through a goals condition that the state had set up in order to promote this management of this federal program by the state. And I was told some of which cost 90% of the value coming in to administer. They took this goal set and actually started using it, cut through all the nonsense, cut through what the state wanted to see, and then started making records as to what the law required. And then it just comes out that they're coming through the uh, counties to promote their goals and get compliance and get consensus that their goal setting is right and they walked into my colleague more importantly the three local uh, workers helping the veterans again I was helping them on taking the method we know as applied against this parasitic amoeba and destroying it he was on the end of receiving that and of learning what he needed to learn and teaching some people that were actually doing that for the veterans. And they ended up having to go and having that's their responsibility to go to a meeting that the state had. There was 12, I understand there's 12 state representatives on implementing this program and only three of these county officials who actually cover four different counties. 
was a special invitation to get we found out that he the my colleague is a is a beneficiary being a vet he was it was said during the meeting he was the first of all the 50 meetings they'd had and 10 more to follow he was the first vet to be at a meeting well, what didn't come out is that why they did that was he had that special invitation. He happened to have an in with his county people. He got the invitation. He was there. Interestingly as well, he didn't really take a position of any statement. He took a position in the back of the room and watched as his the people he had worked for the county address a consensus-based meeting and explain that the state didn't know what they were doing relative to their goals took the goals ahead, readjusted them, refixed them, and showed them how they could give the services for zero cost more than just properly admitting it. That when the state officials tried to impose a urban hospital as an authority, happened to be my colleague happened to not go to that hospital and got the care because the doctor that, that he did the operation was thrown out of that hospital proving that they didn't have expertise in that thing which is the first thing you have to do is take out their expert say and their science remember he knew about that he interjected that to rebut their expert and concisely because he was the example living example against their assertion together with all the the knowledge that the the people on the ground in the counties helping the vets had gotten they were able to expose a plan that didn't require all of this uh, overhead and cost to implement and administer that that program that during the and this is I want to get to the end of the point here I tell you about making a record while we were in doing this and he was he was I was hardly involved more than I talked to him regularly and I would just explain to him what it looked like and sound like he had to do totally outside of knowledge of the subject matter I'm trying to tell you you don't have to know about something if you have someone that knows how what they're after that it came out the late one of the one of the um, the people of the county after making a statement from records that she had developed turned to my colleague at the back of the room and said now I know why you wanted me to make these records this way kudo for the record properly made under the law folks is the point here that combined with the uh, the rebuttal of the expert that the that the uh, manipulators were trying to bring and the recompackaging the alternative of the boots on the ground utility of the program as opposed to the mere management caused one of the participants of the state 12 to 3 here in, in numbers to say we're going to have to redo our whole presentation is the fulfillment of what I'm telling you on how this works you understand the method you know how they're going to take you down you know where they do and you defeat that and they have no answer to it you become the alternative and it becomes more efficient and it actually gets work done the vets are now and it still has to work itself out but it sounds like now the vets are going to have a much more direct less paper filled nonsensical uh, uh, way to get at the services they need now this will have to spread out across the state because the redoing of the next 10 meetings is really applying what was working on the ground and wasn't an idea, wasn't an alternative to man manage the, the VET program. This subversion and, and leveraged funding, hidden leveraged funding by the state theft, is working in almost every place when you notice what's going on when I talk about leveraged funding. This is a state program. This now, go back to the EOs I brought into the broadcast. This now allows them and him, it, it, given he has a problem, to turn these EOs I told you about against the administration by the state itself of a federal program because federal law, federal money follows federal law, uh, federal programs follow federal law, and that state organization can now be tasked with showing how their alternative meets the law. Where they were claiming many tens of percentages of overhead for administration it appears we have exposed all that overhead may be misappropriation of public funds am I not just bringing up that third EO about the, the OMB the Office of Management and Budget for funding so if you understand uh, here I just track me a colleague of mine on something I'm giving advice to someone on a destroying a method of destroying something 
without even having to know the subject matter, he takes the ball and the batons, whatever we gave him, and he ran with it perfectly. To be able to teach people how to defend their own, their own work locally, eliminating and exposing uh, an, an inter interloper inside the system, which diminishes how the vet veterans would get service. is all I've been talking to you about, folks, in a, in a small, concise package to you, a success that uh, not any one of you could step up and do. And I, you know, that's why that's my disappointment about not seeing more. We're not talking in hyperbole. We're not, we're not talking in guessing by golly. We're talking about uh, foundational steps and observations that you do, certain records that you make, certain black and white that you follow, and don't let anybody uh, out there try to convince you otherwise. Like, let's say, P, uh, Pacific Legal Foundation, well, you need to do an administrative, uh, uh, you have to go through the administrative process. That's bogus. Stop it. But the EOs are there to, to guide you, and, and congratulations, you have them there. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com, and Jules over there at uh, ucy.tv, and Sound Minds if you're out there, and what you do in reproduction and normalization of ignorance, thank you uh, very much. Uh, just in case, over at Deep Program, I appreciate all the stuff, that, all the promotion, all the send-outs, all the likes, whatever all you do, uh, get, the, get the word out to people. I'll be with you next week, tech diffs or nature willing. That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.